Is Halloween 3 the biggest missed opportunity in horror history? Let's find out in episode 5 of Obscure Armor. Hello, I'm Sam Ashurst, I'm a director and I love cult movies. And one of the best books about cult movies is this one, the Psychotronic Encyclopedia of Film. It contains thousands of them. And so every week on Obscurama, I take a look through its pages uh, to find some interesting films to talk about. And this week, we're gonna be looking at Halloween 3, which is one of the most important sequels of all time. Why? Let's find out. Halloween 3 opens with a credit sequence that's designed to remind people of the first two films in the franchise, which both had credit sequences featuring pumpkins. Here, you don't realise you're looking at a pumpkin until the credit sequence is complete. So far, so John Carpenter's Halloween. Now, in 1982, when Halloween 3 was released, there was a good chance you didn't actually know that Season of the Witch was an attempt to turn a slasher series into an anthology franchise. Remember, these were the days before trailers landed online every day, because there was no online. So, audiences would have totally expected this guy to be running away from Michael Myers. The movie was called Halloween 3, it had a pumpkin in the credits, and the plot was something to do with masks. And we know who else wears a mask, don't we? What the fuck is this mask? Austin Powers. Doc said Michael Myers! This is Mike Myers! It should be the Halloween mask! This is a Halloween mask! That's right, it's Michael Myers. But what audiences didn't know was there were changes behind the scenes. John Carpenter didn't want to make another Halloween movie. He hadn't even wanted to make a second Halloween movie, as he felt the story was finished at the end of the first one. My idea was that we should never make a sequel to the original Halloween. We never wanted to. No story left. There was nothing left to say. Boy, was I wrong, huh? <laughs> he was right, by the way, but we'll get to that later. But. However Carpenter felt personally, Halloween was such a huge financial success, a sequel was inevitable. Carpenter hadn't seen much of that financial success, so he took Halloween 2 as a chance to make some money. But Halloween 3 was a sequel too far, he didn't direct it, but he agreed to do the score so there was some continuity, and probably mostly because he liked making music. The plan was to basically use the Halloween branding to launch a series of standalone films, released every year, which could have potentially had their own sequels as a way to keep the franchise fresh. Producer Deborah Hill shared John Carpenter's instinct that the Michael Myers story was over, as did Halloween 3 director Tommy Lee Wallace, to the extent that he refused a job on Halloween 2 after production designing and editing the first one. When the concept of Halloween 2 came along, I just hated it. I withdrew from the project. I was in New York when Deborah called me and said, hey, we're going to do Halloween 3. Would you think about being the director? It, it was a godsend because I, I had been worried all along that our paths had just you know, split and weren't going to get back together ever. But he was keen to be part of Halloween 3's exciting new idea, which really could have changed horror cinema forever. Think about it, if Halloween 3 had worked, it would have been horror's MCU, with standalone films having sequels under one banner brand, creating new villains and monsters that could have crossed over in one mega movie, which itself could have had sequels. The money would have never stopped flowing, and we would have had a blockbuster indie brand which could have potentially have given opportunities to a whole load of new voices. So why didn't it work? Lots of different reasons. Firstly, and this one was completely avoidable, disappointing audiences with the absence of Michael Myers. This was the big one. The marketers really should have got the message out there that this was a brand new world, starting with the film's title. Halloween 3 suggests a continuation. If they'd have called it Season of the Witch, or even Halloween Season of the Witch, they could have got away with it. Michael Myers does appear on a couple of television sets, with John Carpenter's Halloween turning up on network TV a couple of times, which is a fun meta joke. The Immortal Classic, followed by the big giveaway at 9, brought to you 
combine. But it would have been a further kick in the teeth to people who bought tickets to see a traditional Halloween movie. Another reason Halloween 3 didn't work as a reset was the film's casting. Now, I love Tom Atkins, he's awesome, and he's been in so many films I love. Movies like The Fog, Night of the Creeps, Escape from New York, and many more. I got good news and bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. But was he the right lead for this? Maybe not. After all, people were turning up to this thing expecting to see another babysitter murder movie and not an invasion of the body snatchers meets Willy Wonka weirdo fest in which the middle-aged lead awkwardly seduces someone who looks like she should be a babysitter. That would look sort of suspicious, wouldn't it? What I mean is, if you'd uh, feel more comfortable, uh, I could sleep in the car. Be better in this floor anyway. Where do you want to sleep, Dr. Chalice? That's a dumb question, Miss Grimpage. This film's same plot, but from the perspective of a bunch of kids who discover there's something creepy going on with the mask, now you're talking. If you've got a built-in audience of teenagers going to the cinema on date night, maybe don't make them watch an alcoholic having a midlife crisis if you want them to go along with your surprise reboot. If the audience had been given protagonists they could identify with, the backlash probably wouldn't have been so big. It sounds like I'm being hard on Halloween 3. I don't hate this film, there's plenty to love about it. The music is fantastic. And it probably influenced James Cameron when he was putting together Terminator, another robot pursuit movie with a synth score, which came out a couple of years later. There's some great gore. I love the way the robots try to take off people's faces, like they're pulling off a mask. And whoever came up with the idea that the mask turned dead bodies into portals for bugs and snakes is a gross out genius. The ending, which I won't go into detail on because of spoilers, is absolutely insane, but in a really fun way. The motivation is baffling, and one element involving Ellie makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But I do love that it ends on a super bleak note, like so many of John Carpenter's films, whether that's The Thing, In the Mouth of Madness, or even the original Halloween. But perhaps the bleakest element of all this is that Halloween 3's perceived failure led to a return to the Michael Myers story in Halloween 4, with John Carpenter's original instinct that this was a one and done story, proven right over and over again after that. Now, I know this franchise has fans, but has there ever been an instalment to match that perfect original? Even the most recent entry, the annoyingly titled Halloween, which ignores all the sequels, still undermines that perfect first film. It ruins the ending where the shape vanishes, only to be presumably picked up by police a couple of blocks later, so he can show up in prison at the start of Blumhouse's reboot after doing nothing for 40 years. How chilling. <laughs> That's very partridge. After Halloween 3, every new wave has had to ignore the embarrassing mistakes of what came before. Halloween 4 ignores Halloween 3. H2O ignores parts 4, 5 and 6. Rob Zombie's movies ignore everything, with the Blumhouse era only acknowledging the first movie. The franchise is a mess, and Halloween 3 was a huge turning point that could have stopped that from happening. And who knows, maybe it could have inspired other diminishing returns franchises into taking a similar risk. That's why I say it's the biggest missed opportunity in horror history. But if you feel differently, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you don't miss any of our future Hex Presents videos or any of our other crazy shows at Channel Hex by hitting subscribe and the bell notification icon. Also, if you would like to support our channel and help us make more exciting and fun shows, then do support us on Patreon by hitting the link in the description. Thank you guys and goodbye.